as we all know, as technology progresses, as rider demands increase, companies have to adapt. And that's exactly what was going on in the 80s when it comes to this brand and this hub. Maillard uh, decided to reinvent the gearing system and they came up with this helicomatic hub. I'll go into a bit more detail about it, but first, what came before? Now, before Maillard decided to reinvent this stuff, um, most bikes, most geared bikes, in fact all geared bikes, came with a freewheel. There were the internally geared Sturmey Arch 3 speeds, but they were developed a bit before this system. Um, the freewheel started in, I'm going to say the 30s, that's the earliest uh, derailleur and freewheel system that I have. Um, and it was invented by the French. So leave it to the French to try and reinvent it again later on. The freewheel system that you see here has the hub and it has threads here for a freewheel block to screw onto. As you can kind of see here, the bearings for the hub sit in one side on the non-drive side and they sit right at the back here, almost in the centre in some cases, on the drive side. Now that leads us to where the innovation kind of needed to come in. As gearing increased, the length of the axle got longer and this bearing here got further down the axle and it caused bending of the axle, it caused breakages of the axle. So that's where the demand for a reinvention came in because as gearing increased, they needs to make it a bit safer. There's also the fact that the freewheel is a little bit difficult to get off. There are many different types of freewheel now, um, various tools required to get them off, but back in the day they came with these two notched freewheels. This is four speed, it's probably 50s, 40s, 40s or 50s even. Now these two notches, they are very shallow and if you don't get the right tool and the right grip it's very easy to destroy these notches and that would lead to having to destroy the freewheel to actually get it off and that's a bit of a pain. It's also a case that as you pedal the freewheel actually gets tighter on this hub and so getting them off in the first place is quite a fight without having to try and fight against a let's say poorly designed removal system. So that's basically the premise of where the reinvention wanted to come in. Now the helicomatic system here looks pretty similar. I think you'd have to agree. Um, it looks exactly like a freewheel. The only difference that you might be able to see is on the end here. On the end is what looks like a lock ring instead of the freewheel which has a space for the tool to fit in. The lock ring is a lot more consistent with a modern day cassette. This body outside is a freewheel, the lock ring holds it on and it acts as a sort of cassette because you can slide this whole block on and off. It is very simple to change one of these things, very simple. All you need is this little tool. You can still get these, they're on eBay. Um, I think this one was about £17 and it comes with the most important function of being a bottle opener also comes with two spoke wrenches at either end. Uh, and this is all you really need to undo one of these. There's no need for a big spanner, a vise, 
a free wheel remover tool. All you need is this thin piece of metal. And in terms of cassette, there's no need for a chain whip or anything like that. It is literally just a case of putting it on and unscrewing it. Now, I've took this apart and cleaned it up already for this video, but when I took it apart for the very first time, and this is a 1985 bike, it did come apart just as easy. So we've got this little lock ring on top, and that is all that it is, this little lock ring. Now, when you remove this, it comes off in a sort of spiral pattern. So the free wall system is working against you there. So you just have to pull it off towards you and it will sort of rotate in your hand slightly, but that is off. So what you can see here is the helicomatic, let's call it a free wheel, because it is kind of a free wheel system. It's a free wheel slash cassette. Now, you can see the difference straight away compared to the free wheel hub. The free wheel hub had the threads to screw it on. The helicomatic hub has this extra bit of body here. And what that did, it meant that the bearings, instead of sitting under the flange of the hub, it moved all the way to the end and gave great support so it helped reduce and stop that axle bending and the axle braking when the gearing increased. Now these were available in 5 to 8 speeds and if you've ever seen an 8 speed freewheel it is ridiculous um, and there's a lot of axle sticking out here so that is a big benefit when it comes to the eight speed design. It's also, compared to the free wheel, very easy to deal with. Say if you one of your spokes snapped, which apparently is a reason why these were designed, because if a spoke snapped it was very difficult to get a free wheel off. All you'd have to do is carry around one of these tools, simply undo that lacquering, slide it off, and you could change a spoke pretty much at the side of a road. There's no need for any support carrying big tools or anything like that. Apparently, one more advantage that I read about was that because Maillard designed this hub, it was compatible with a lot of their uh, previous products. Um, as in, you could take the lock rings, you could take the cone washers and everything from other hubs and use it on here so if they wore you could just replace them. Now in in terms of design, in terms of idea, it is it is a good idea. I mean you've spaced out the load points a bit better on the axle or a lot better on the axle. You made it easier to change the system out but it did have its downsides and, and that's where it kind of never took off. From what I've read, the downsides of this, and it's kind of ironic, the downside was that it actually managed to snap more spokes. Um, the design of this actually increased the dishing on the wheels somehow. I'm not sure how, but it says it on Sheldon Brown's website. Um, and that increased dishing lead to increased stress and the spokes decided to snap more. It was also a problem that due to the design and the clearances, the higher end models, um, possibly this model actually, needed to use 532 bearings instead of the bigger quarter inch. And having those smaller bearings on the rear, where all the force is going through, all the torque is going through, led to premature wear, or accelerated wear, and premature failure of both the bearings well, and the cups and cones. Which is never good. Um, you don't want your 
rear wheel suddenly disintegrating mid ride because the bearings have failed. So, in all, it was a kind of good idea, but it wasn't executed in the best way. It may have taken off, it may have taken off if it wasn't for one small thing. And that small thing is a company called Shimano. Now this was this idea here, let's take that out of the way. This idea was developed in 1978 and it went through production from sort of 1980 to 1988. So it didn't last, it didn't even last out of the 80s. But at the same time Shimano, an up and coming company from Japan was developing their cassette system which we all know today, we all use today and it was developing their free hub body. It wasn't quite the ones we use because obviously things have progressed, technology have got better but that system turned out to be a lot more effective than this. Um, it was a bit more refined, a bit more cost effective at the time yeah, due to the currency differences at that point. Um, so Shimano managed to overtake the powerhouse that was Maillard at the time and unfortunately this system was kind of relegated to history. So this is obviously just a quick look at the helicomatic system. I thought it was an interesting thing to sort of have um, it came off my 1985 rally record sprint um, and they're not just limited to the road bike capacity um, they did do BMX stuff as well and they did uh, all-terrain bikes, mountain bikes um, systems as well and I believe the mountain bike system is called the Diablo um, they are slightly different to this but they work in the similar sort of way as in they've got this spiral splined system that goes on which to be honest I mean this was clean but it got a little dirty it's a beautiful system that is a that is beautiful workmanship on there so I think that's about it now for this just going to be a short video. Um, if you have any experiences of the helicomatic system, then uh, leave a comment down below and we will see what's what. Um, I'm going to clean this up a bit more, probably keep it in the collection somewhere because um, it is just like a, a nice little bit of technology that was developed, unfortunately, didn't work. Um, but it's nice to see how things sort of progress through time. Um, I still really love this workmanship. Just that spiral design looks really, and it feels nice when it's coming off as well. So I hope you like this little insight into the helicomatic hook. If you did, like drop a drop a thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. Subscribe if you want to see more. It's not all like this. Um, I do bike builds, I do rides every now and again, uh, mainly bike builds and maintenance, but these little odd pieces of history I do like to just look at a bit more. So stick around for that and uh, I'll see you in the next video.